Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and in an incredibly exciting announcement, the LEGO Space collectible minifigure series launching May 1st of this year has just been revealed by an official LEGO retailer. While this isn't technically the official announcement from LEGO, we are allowed to cover it because the images do come from a LEGO retailer, and this is super exciting because obviously the Space CMF is something that I have been personally very excited about ever since it was rumored a few months ago and then we started to get some very blurry images and some detailed descriptions and my excitement only grew more and more until now where you can actually see full HD images of all the characters. Yes, there's a revamped Mtron character, Blacktron 2, Ice Planet, so many references to classic LEGO themes, but there's also a lot of minifigures that really kind of pave their own path, and even some more obscure references that I wouldn't even have expected them to do, like a Galaxy Squad bugoid type of minifigure. So. Altogether, this is a really cool series. I cannot wait for it to release on May 1st, and it looks like LEGO is doing some incredible minifigure series this year. Obviously, we have the Dungeons & Dragons rumored collectible minifigure series coming out later this year, so LEGO is really firing at all cylinders, and I cannot wait to get into all the details. Let's take a look at the brand new Space CMF right now. So this is super exciting because this is our first pretty HD image of the entire collectible minifigure series for the space lineup coming in May. I am so excited for this because when I was growing up, LEGO Space and LEGO Bionicle were my two favorite LEGO themes, and I have so many fond memories of LEGO Space and the classic space factions, and because of that, this feels like a love letter to pretty much everything LEGO Space, from the early days of classic space to even some of the more modern space themes like Galaxy Squad being represented here, this has pretty much something for everyone. Whether you're looking for sci-fi, retro, kind of older style of cartoon type of space love or even some more modern stuff that's a little bit more realistic this has a pretty decent mix of everything that you would want in a space oriented series so let's just start off by taking a look at some of my personal favorites and just going in sort of a random order the one that really draws my eye is of course the ice planet one and i feel like i probably have the most to say about this particular figure I'm gonna be honest, I am a little torn on this one. For those who don't know, transparent neon orange is now a discontinued color. All of the transparent neon colors have been discontinued because LEGO has changed the type of plastic that they use for transparent pieces, so they can no longer actually have that neon color, so trans neon green and trans neon orange are sadly completely discontinued. They were phased out a year or two years ago, so unfortunately, they couldn't actually make or use any new transparent neon orange parts and instead it's using just regular transparent orange for the chainsaw which I think is alright I mean if you do want a transparent neon orange chainsaw they do exist there are many of them that came out back when Ice Planet was still coming out so it's not a huge loss and it is kind of cool to get this in a new color but I do feel like the big miss on this figure for me is the way the helmet is done something about the color blocking makes me feel like maybe there could have been a little bit more printing obviously Ice Planet is known for the fully transparent neon orange visors, and if they weren't going to make a new visor piece for the helmet, I feel like the orange detailing should have just stretched a little bit more alongside the rest of the visor itself. As of right now, it almost feels like this is almost unfinished or unprinted in terms of the way I wanted an Ice Planet figure to look like. I do love the mold for the helmet. I think the helmet mold is really cool. It almost feels like something out of Fallout or Mass Effect or maybe even something from Warhammer 40k. So I definitely am getting that sci-fi influence, especially with the bulky armor. But I do feel like just one slit for the orange visor, while it might be a little bit more realistic that that is the only glowing orange part of the figure, does feel a little bit dull in comparison to the original figures which obviously had those very large and flashy transparent neon orange visors. Otherwise though, this is pretty much the perfect upgrade to an Ice Planet figure. It's utilizing the armor that we first saw in stuff like the Bad Batch and also used in the Lightyear sets, which I think works very well for the figure, and I love how it has an Ice Planet penguin to go alongside it. Who knows, is this a penguin wearing a suit, or is it a robotic droid-like companion for the character? You decide, but I think that is a really fun addition and I'm really happy they were able to include something even more special for this figure other than just the standard accessories. Although 
I also kind of find it strange how it doesn't come with skis. I would have thought that this figure would have had transparent orange skis, but for whatever reason, they did not include them. And I don't even know if that piece is still in circulation, to be honest. Maybe, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of curious. If we go to Bricklink and figure out when the skis last appeared in a set, maybe that's because they are actually no longer being produced. I know the ones with the clips are not being made, but this one, okay, 2023 was the last time they appeared. So LEGO could have made this if they wanted to. They just chose not to, or maybe didn't have the budget to include the ski element, but I think it would have been really cool and just made the set a little bit more special if they were to have included a trans orange ski element for the figure, but it is what it is. Moving on from that, we have another reference to my personal favorite classic space faction, which is Blacktron. While obviously I'm more partial to Blacktron 1, Blacktron 2 is also really cool. And I'm also kind of mixed on this figure because on the one hand, I feel like they absolutely had to do something more interesting with it than making a standard Blacktron 2 astronaut. Even if they updated the printing, which is a very nice updated torso and leg print, Obviously, if they just made it kind of like a classic astronaut, it wouldn't have been that exciting. So what this minifigure is, is that it is a partially mutated Blacktron 2 soldier, where one half of the figure has been mutated, you maybe have him fusing with alien DNA, where you have an extra set of arms going out of the side here, using that stitch arm piece that they brought back recently that first originated in Solo, a Star Wars story set, and we also have the fawn legs being used here, or the gremlins legs being used for the digitigrade style of monster leg for one foot, and I think that makes this figure a lot more interesting, a lot more collectible, a lot more exciting, and honestly better than if they were to have just released a standard Blacktron 2 revamped astronaut, but unfortunately because of that, that means that at least as of right now, unless LEGO decides to do more space stuff, there is no way to get a new revamped regular version of the Blacktron 2 astronaut without I guess resorting to customs, but I mean, those customs don't really exist, so you can't actually get it. There is no other side of the leg for this particular version of the leg, and really that's all you needed. Like, you could have used a plain white arm here, and yes, I can swap out for a plain white leg and it would be almost as good, but it is a shame that we're getting this printing on only one leg, and we aren't getting the other leg to match it. It's just a minor thing, I just think it would have been really cool if... I don't know how they would have done it, maybe integrated another leg element, like made it even more special and had this figure come with a separate pair of legs so you can make it a normal version. It is what it is, I definitely feel like the figure is a lot more interesting as a result of being a mutated figure, but it's just something I wanted to point out. Moving on from that, we have another classic space faction reference here, and that is this Mtron figure, and this to me is probably, out of all of them, is the most faithful and probably the best rendition of a classic LEGO minifigure design being brought to life. Now, this is really cool because this seems to be introducing a brand new set of pieces. Well, this is definitely a new mold here, but it looks like this is almost like a flexible cord that is tied to the back. I am so curious to see what that piece actually looks like in person to play around with it. It looks like this is some sort of a magnetic clamp. I don't think it integrates any magnets because LEGO has stopped using magnets these small. I'm sure there's just a stud on the other end of this, but I think it's a really interesting piece. I love how they're printing this 2x1 printed tile for Mtron, which is very, very clever of them to use that. Kind of a callback to the original printed tile that we got for Mtron back in the day. And overall, this is just the perfect Mtron minifigure in modern form. You have the Nexo Knights helmet piece, which I think works great for this figure. No visor included, but instead it actually has a printed face to mimic the visor. Honestly, not 100% sure how I feel about that, but I think it definitely has a more interesting look and feel because they chose not to do a visor and instead have the head printed. And from what we've seen of some alternate images that I don't think I'm allowed to cover now because those technically, we're not sure where those images come from. He does have an alternate face where you have the regular face print as well in case you want to use that. But overall, Definitely an army building figure for me. I plan to get so many copies of this, the Ice Planet figure, and probably a ton of copies of the Blacktron figure as well. And obviously I'm very biased, but these three figures that we just covered are my most anticipated figures. Because look, I'm a sucker for nostalgia and retro LEGO items, but I totally understand that LEGO can't do a minifigure series filled with just that, because then nobody would know, the general public wouldn't know what they're supposed to be. So they really were trying to give a mix here. 
the final explicit LEGO theme reference, and obviously there are some scattered here and there, but the final one that is meant to be part of like an older LEGO Space Faction sub-theme is this one here. Now this is actually what a lot of people were initially thinking, well maybe is this related to uh, insectoids, or is it related to UFO or something like that, but I feel like this minifigure is actually very clearly supposed to be a Galaxy Squad alien bugoid, because of the way the printing is done on the torso, it is using the Degenerate font legs, which I think is pretty cool, but this very clearly, at least to me, looks like it is meant to be mimicking that style of figure. It's using the Ladybug CMF piece as beetle wings on the back, which I think works really well. You have a snack for the bug as well. And this feels like it will be right at home with the alien bugoids from Galaxy Squad, so much so that I've actually already preset a spot in my LEGO Space minifigure display to put this guy right next to the Galaxy Squad minifigures. I think it's really cool. It is a little bit more niche compared to the other retro theme callbacks, but I do think it is a good looking minifigure. Nice new mold, the color scheme is phenomenal with the dark blue and the kind of magenta color being integrated in, and it's another really massable army building style of character, and oh my goodness, this series is going to bankrupt me because rarely do I go and see a series and be like, I want multiple copies of more than, like, just two of the figures. Like, two is already means it's a good series for me if I want to get multiple copies, but I'm looking at four figures here so far, and I'm like, wow, I want to get multiple copies of all four of these. So, that's very dangerous, but hey, you know what? That's a sign of a good series. And lastly, we do have a minifigure that is sort of a classic space reference. It is a nurse droid here. Obviously, the nurse droid doesn't seem like it ties into any particular space sub-theme. I mean, maybe you could say that the armor plating or the metallic torso kind of looks like some of the droids that we would get for Explorians or UFO or Spireus, but it kind of feels just like an amalgamation of sci-fi tropes about a nursing droid. There are transparent blue arms being used here with printing on the side of the arms, which I'm sure is going to look great. And the big draw here is, of course, a pink baby classic spaceman. That is going to be adorable. I cannot wait to get so many of these. So I guess this is also one of the figures I need to get doubles of just to get more of those pink space babies. So obviously we've been getting a lot of different colors of the space babies. We got a blue, we got a white miniature spaceman, and now we're getting a pink baby spaceman, which is so cute. And I can't wait to see what other colors they decide to do this in. The figure for the nurse is fairly basic for the hairpiece, but I do think it's a nice one, especially with the transparent printed arms. It's going to be a really good figure to get, and I'm excited to add it to the collection. And moving on from that, we have a number of sort of generic sci-fi-esque characters. Now, I'm going to just focus on this one really quick, because this one clearly is meant to be sort of reminiscent of the LEGO Spaceport astronauts, or more specifically, it's meant to really be a classic or more modern style of astronaut that fits into LEGO City. This piece back here looks to be a new element. I could be getting fooled by that, and it might be an amalgamation of existing pieces, but I'm pretty sure at least this is a new piece here, this bar on the back. And it is meant to basically be that kind of special articulated, movable jetpack type thing that real world astronauts use to navigate in space. I'm sure there's a legitimate name for that that folks in the comments will explain very clearly what the official scientific name for that is called, but it is very realistic. I like the way it's done. I think it is a really nice piece they've introduced there for the astronaut. I like the printing on the side of the legs, giving it a little bit of an extra amount of detail. That is the one thing, like, some of the figures, like, this could have totally used printing on the side of the legs. I don't know if the Blacktron figure is printing on this leg, but I feel like that could have been used. The Mtron figure in general, the only flaw is that it doesn't have dual molded legs, which feels very weird to me. Like, you can see that the side of the leg is just plain red. So it does feel like for some of the figures here, they were scrimping a little bit on the dual molding or printing on the side. But for this one, it is really nice to see the printing on the side of the leg right here. It does have printed arms, which you can see, which is going to look really good. And while this is maybe not the most exciting figure, it is a really good realistic spaceman. And I'm curious to see what the helmet looks like underneath when you remove it, what the facial print looks like for that. Moving on from that, though, there is... I guess we're kind of going in order of specific, explicit LEGO references, and then going over to looser and looser references. And this one right here is meant to be a gender-swapped female version of the Retro Spaceman, if you don't know what that looks like. I'm going to pull up a picture right now 
of the Retro Spaceman from the original series of LEGO collectible minifigures. Let me see, yeah, this one right here. So this came in series 17 and it is kind of meant to mimic those classic cartoons or animations or even some of those story serials that we would get like all the way back in like the 50s or 60s, back in the early space age exploration times. So you've got the male version of the retro spaceman here, and then here you have the female version. It is a shame that they did not bring back this mold, which has of course long been destroyed, but it was the perfect mold for a retro space person, and I'm very sad they didn't bring it back for this, but the gold standard space blaster is fine as well. This of course has some great detailing with the special same exact logo printed on the Side of the arms, dual molded arms, dual molded legs, printing on the side of the legs, and even as a skirt which is very much in line with those kind of pulpy serials that this is really trying to evoke. It has a specialized new helmet which I don't know, I feel like that kind of works for something like Astro Boy or something like that. I don't know, I feel like that helmet shape kind of looks like something I've seen before, but it is a nice dual molded helmet, and it even comes with a metallic silver Robo Dog, which is very cool. For me, this isn't one that I necessarily will be army building because it's not a concept that really interests me as much as, say, something like the Mtron figure, but it is still a very well produced figure, and some might even say the best produced figure so far because it's actually got dual molding for every component and printing on the sides for each component as well. Moving on from that though, we're kind of jumping around here. One of the figures that does not tie into any existing LEGO property, but one that interests me a lot and definitely one that I'm going to get at least a couple copies of is this figure right here. We don't know the official names of the figures yet, but this is meant to evoke one of the constellations. So you kind of have that ancient Greek or Roman style of armor on it. It's a very unique direction for a space figure, but I love it. You have transparent arms printing on the side of the arms. Oh, no way. That's not printing, that's glitter. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Is this the first time we've gotten transparent glitter minifigure elements? That's crazy. Okay, wait, that's really interesting. So no, that's not printing, that's actually glitter. So the, the legs and the arms are transparent glitter pieces, same with the head. And the hair is transparent as well. This is a new mold for a club that they've introduced in transparent purple and a new print for the trans purple shield. Yeah, this is an absolute winner for me. It is one of the most... I would say surreal minifigures they've done for this. It is definitely one of the most abstract, but that makes me like it even more, and I think it's one of the most interesting ones to come out of the series, and just from a minifigure design standpoint, I have to really, really like this figure. Even though it doesn't even tie into anything LEGO's done before, I think it's a really cool idea and a very original one for this series. Moving on from that though, we have a couple of other figures that are meant to tie into classic sci-fi tropes, which honestly, they're not the most interesting to me, but I can see that for a space series, it makes sense to include figures like these. This one right here is a minifigure who, if you look at the box art of this, has an alternate face with a kind of creepy looking smile, and that's of course because he's not a man at all. He is being piloted by these miniature green Martians from outer space. This is a really good print for the trophy figure. I think that's very clever. I love this printing on the head, and I love that you can actually stick this into the hair itself. It's a brand new piece that they've introduced for both the, I believe both the hair as well as this new piece for the antenna is for sure definitely new. The minifigure itself is not the most interesting. Like the legs are pretty much just plain red except for, or plain dark red except for just a little bit of printing on the toes. I don't even really know what that's supposed to represent. I don't know why they did that printing there. I'll have to see it up more up close and personal to see what they're trying to get with that, but obviously it is meant to evoke this kind of alien in disguise type of aesthetic that, that you would see in cartoons or old sci-fi movies, so you've got the very angular lines. It looks like you actually have screw holes on the side of the minifigure, which I think is really funny. But overall, not the most exciting thing, but just a fun and cute collectible minifigure. Moving on from that though, we have this other figure here which looks to be a robot, or maybe it's a minifigure in a robot costume? No, the hands are definitely gold and not yellow, so this looks to be a robot. And this is, again, one of those classic style of robot characters you would see, like, dressed up for TV serials and stuff like that. This is a brand new piece used for the legs, which is probably only ever going to appear in this minifigure, but it is interesting to get a new leg piece. Looks to be printing on the side of the arms as well. This looks like a cooking robot, and again, not the most exciting thing for me, but it is still a nice figure. Moving onwards, we have a fun one here. This is a UFO outfit man, and this is actually really clever. Like, this is legitimately 
kind of a pretty good Halloween costume. Like, minifigure aside, that's a very smart Halloween costume to, like, paint your skin green and just put a UFO on your head and then dress in, like, a black bodysuit with stars on it. I don't know, that's pretty clever. I kind of like that as a Halloween outfit. I'm very curious to see how this piece works because it doesn't look like it attaches on the head. Like, this... I mean, I could be wrong, but it doesn't look like the stud is actually connected there, which makes me think that this is going around the neck because also, if you look at it, the head feels like it's a little bit elevated above the torso, so you kind of have this going around the neck. But then I'm wondering, well, how does this actually attach? So I think this is actually two pieces. This is the clear LEGO dome piece, and then this is just a silver UFO saucer piece, which I think is going to be very useful for custom figures, because I'm sure you can use it for other stuff other than just a UFO, especially if the transparent clear part here, which looks to be just the regular dome is detachable so very excited to get that in person to see what it's like the torso and legs is actually a nice one to get for just standard minifigures as well if you don't want to use it for this i'm sure there's other things that you can use it for the only miss for me makes it is that I feel like there should have been printing on the arms, and I could be wrong, like maybe it's just the angle, but I'm not seeing any arm printing, and I think that would be really cool if they were to include arm printing, just to just sell the value of the figure even more. But as it is right now, it's an amalgamation of interesting pieces that makes up a pretty cool minifigure. And last but not least here, we have an alien tourist, and this one is pretty funny because you have the dual molded arms with this Hawaiian shirt pattern. It says, I love Earth on it, but of course you have the gray skin showing underneath. Honestly, this is one of the least exciting ones because it doesn't even introduce any new molds unless the backpack is new, but I highly doubt it. I'm sure it's just kind of a regular backpack piece we've seen before, but... For me, I think it would have been really interesting if they reused or maybe even used, uh, created a new mold for the alien head that we got in Season 6 for Series 6 of collectible minifigures, but maybe one that either had a hat molded into it or a stud on the top, even better, so you could have him be wearing different hats, but as it is right now, it's just a regular minifig head, the only accessory is the camera. It's not the most exciting minifigure to me, but having an alien tourist is kind of a must-have for a Space CMF series, so I understand why it was included. Overall, I feel like this is the strongest series in my opinion. I feel like the list that I went down sort of was my ranking of most excited to least excited, although maybe this one should have been bumped up a little bit more because this one is actually like at least in the top four minifigures of the series. But that's my thoughts on the brand new Space CMF. Sorry for going on for so long, I have so much more to say about this series than I usually have with a lot of other series, so beyond excited for them to release this, this is super cool, and I can't wait to be lined up on May 1st, bright and early to get these, and I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on how they pulled off these figures as well. Let me know in the comments, thanks so much. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at the brand new LEGO collectible minifigure Space Edition series launching May 1st. Let me know in the comments which ones are your favorites. Do you like them? Do you dislike them? How do you feel about that Ice Planet minifigure? Because I really like it, but something does feel a little bit off to me. But again, that might just be me. And I just cannot wait to see these in person because obviously from one image, you're only getting a certain amount of detail. I'm really excited to see more about what the Mtron accessory is with that claw grabber type of thing. So there's all sorts of details that of course we do have to wait for the official reveal to see, but this is a really nice sneak peek. And I know I'm going to be lighting up on May 1st, bright and early, and probably going to have to rally a ton of people at the Lego store to buy a full box because my lego store has a minimum of like six minifigures per person it might actually be down to four so i'm gonna have to figure out some sort of configuration of people bring a small army to the lego store to be able to get a full series but hey you know what i'm gonna do it because this is an incredible series and i cannot wait to cover them more that's all for now thanks for tuning into duck bricks be sure to like and subscribe for even more lego news reviews discussion and analyses coming your way very soon and bye for now